Hello, my name is Stuart Hamblin. Welcome to my YouTube Feldenkrais channel. In today's lesson, we're going to be continuing the theme that we've been exploring in the breathing lessons, how to improve the mobility of your ribs. So please begin by lying down on your mat. And if you need a little bit of support underneath the head, please take that. The idea when you're lying down is, is to try and have length in the back of the neck. So sometimes it's helpful just to have a small pillow or a folded blanket or towel just to support the head. But otherwise, if comfortable, please lengthen the legs. And when you've lengthened the legs, take a moment just to notice the overall contact that you make into the floor. Think about how you've chosen to place the two legs and how you've placed the arms. And then one thing I like to ask my students to do here in Rutland is to imagine that they're lying on a gymnastics balance beam, one of those small um, uh, thin beams. And you just imagine you're lying there to see how you are organised around your imaginary beam. And once you've thought about, just to notice as you're lying on this beam, which direction would you be falling off the, off the beam? And, and which part of you would be going first? So I can feel the left side of my pelvis is a little bit higher than my right uh, today. So I'd be falling off the beam, off to the right, off to the left, sorry, rather than the right, which is interesting. And then I notice that my ribs on the right-hand side are a little bit lighter than the ribs on the left. And I'm right-handed, so that makes overall sense in terms of my general pattern. And once you've considered that, please just roll the head a little bit from side to side. And notice if the ease of the rolling of the head reflects that pattern that you may have discovered thinking about the imaginary beam. And I can feel this morning, again, it's easier for me to roll the head to the left compared to the right. I also now notice that my right shoulder is a little bit lighter than my, than my left. Once you've rolled the head a few times from side to side, um, please bring both feet to standing and have the feet a comfortable distance apart. So about sh uh, hip width apart or shoulder width apart and the knees ideally over the feet as opposed to tilted out to the side. And then think or imagine you are lying on a clock, this fel famous Feldenkrais clock, and the clock is painted on the back of your pants. It's about the size of a large orange. <laughs> and then think about just rolling your pelvis a little bit to 12 o'clock towards the head and then towards 6 o'clock towards the feet. So you're just gently rolling the pelvis to 12 o'clock towards the head and then towards 6 o'clock towards the feet. And one way of doing this is to press down into the feet as if I'm pushing the floor away to help me roll to 12 o'clock and then I think of the feet becoming super light to help me roll to 6 o'clock. So just do a few more of these movements using the feet to press to go to 12 o'clock and to become light to go to 6 o'clock. And you'll just notice that when you go to 12 o'clock, the lower back comes closer to the floor. I can hardly slide my fingers underneath my lower back. When I go to 6 o'clock, the arch of the lower back increases and you'll probably be able to slide a hand into the area of the lower back when you do that. And then pause somewhere in the middle. And then the other way of thinking of doing this 12 o'clock and 6 o'clock movement is to think as you're pressing into the feet to also 
pull in a spot about two inches below your navel, so where my finger is pointing here, as though that, I'm, that is being pulled in, and then you push that area out with the tummy to go to six o'clock and arch the lower back. So you, you can combine these two methods of actively using the feet to help you move the pelvis, but also think of more actively recruiting your tummy and back muscles to help with the, the two directions. Now, pause and then think of the right hip being three o'clock and the left hip being nine o'clock. And could you just roll your pelvis a little bit to three o'clock to the right and to nine o'clock towards the left. Now, very commonly what happens in class is that people will tilt, begin to tilt their knees to do this. So see if you can instead keep your knees looking towards the ceiling. And you can still use the legs to help you with this movement. So if I press into the left foot, that will help me to roll the pelvis down to the right to our three o'clock position. And if I press into the left foot, to, sorry, into the right foot, it will help me roll the pelvis to the left. And as you're pressing into the feet, you want to think of the thigh of the foot that your leg that you're pressing into lengthening away from you lengthening away from you and and then you'll feel this movement is rather like walking walking so you press into one foot to help roll the other side of the pelvis down and vice versa and and then pause in the middle so we've established um, 12 o'clock and 6 o'clock direction right hip is three o'clock left hip is nine o'clock could you now roll your pelvis to 12 o'clock and then from there roll the pelvis round to what would be one o'clock two o'clock three o'clock so down to the right and then come back to two one twelve and then continue round to eleven ten and nine and then reverse to ten eleven twelve and round to one two three so just do that a few more times just going round these hours of the clock from twelve to one two three and then back to two one twelve and then eleven ten and nine just so you get used to tracking out these hours with the clock, with the pelvis. And you might find that some of the hours are much clearer than the others. So you just persevere, do what you can, and noticing if some hours feel different compared to the other. Once you've explored that, come back to centre and just take a restful moment with the legs long and just feel what if any difference that has made to how you're making contact into the floor and roll the head again a little bit from one side to the other and I can feel just from doing those variations it's a little bit easier now to come to the right and my, the right side of my pelvis has come down a little bit and don't be surprised if you find the rolling of the head a bit easier, even though we've been looking at the pelvis. There's an intimate connection between the freedom of the head to roll and turn and the freedom in the hip joints. Now, bring your right leg to standing and begin to do a few movements of just pressing down into the right foot so as to roll the pelvis to the left but more particularly through those hours of 11 and 10 o'clock 
So you're trying to press down into the right foot to roll the pelvis towards the left, but really trying to bring the lower back or the sacrum down on the left hand side. Now try a few different places for the right foot to make sure you've got the really best place to press press into. If, if your foot, right foot, is too close to the left leg it won't nearly be as effective so you may just need to take it a little bit out to the right and try a few different positions there. You want to try and keep the knee looking towards the ceiling as you press into the foot so that the knee isn't tilting to the inside and also this sense of the thigh lengthening away from you as you press into the foot and if you can manage to keep all of those things in mind you'll discover this really delicious opening in the hip as you press into the foot. See if the, if the knee tends to fall to the inside what, what often happens it means you're still gripping in the inner thigh muscles, the adductors so just by having this idea of the knee staying towards the ceiling as you press into the foot, the thigh lengthening away from you, you get a lovely opening in the, in the groin. Now pause and lengthen, if you can, your left arm overhead on the floor. So it's above the line of my shoulder and the back of the palm the back, sorry, the back of the hand is in contact with the floor and your right arm for the moment is just down by your side and press again into the right foot so as to roll the pelvis through those hours of 11 and 10 o'clock and see if you can sense the left arm lengthening as a result of pressing down into the right foot. So you press into the foot, the sequence is the foot, you'll feel the movement travel up into the knee and then it's as if it rolls down the thigh into the hip joint and then it pushes through the skeleton with the idea you're just lengthening or allowing that left arm to lengthen a little bit on the floor and it might just be a millimetre that you sense the back of the hand sliding a little bit on the floor but you're really trying to feel this push effect of the foot that if you think of it travelling through those hours there's a push into the scapula and the ribs that helps just to slide the back of that left hand a little bit on the floor. And once you've thought, thought about that, felt that, then see if you can roll the head and eyes or turn the head and eyes to look towards your left arm or your left hand. So you press into the foot, try to get that push through the skeleton and turn the head and eyes if you can to look towards that left arm. Now you might just see the armpit at first, that's fine the left armpit, you might see the elbow or you might actually be able to see the hand but in order to see the hand for, and for it not to be a strain, something needs to happen that in terms of the chin. So can you see that as I'm turning my head and eyes to look towards the hand, my chin, the chin is moving away from the breastbone. But also, and I hope you can see this, the back of my head slides in the direction of my right shoulder. So as I press into the foot, turning the head and eyes, the back of my head slides towards my right shoulder, the
the chin moves away from the breastbone. If you try to keep the head still, it'll be much, much harder to turn to see that hand. Pause. Please leave it alone for a second and take a rest. And if resting, just notice that contact into the floor. You can think about that balance beam once more and then roll the head a little bit from side to side. Oh, getting much easier on to my right now. Which is not surprising really because that movement we've been looking at has been getting those ribs on the right hand side to, to come together. And the more those ribs are able to um, fold and join in, then that facilitates the rolling of the head or can do. Bring your right leg back to standing. Take your left arm overhead again in the same way. So the back of the hand is on the floor, the palm is towards the ceiling. And this time, also turn your right palm, and that arm stays down by your side towards the ceiling. And begin again to explore, pressing into the right foot so as to lengthen the left arm. But this time, roll the head and eyes to try and see your right arm. Now you may not see it, but you have the idea of looking. So you press into the foot, the right side of the pelvis rolls to the left, and I look towards my right arm, which at the same time I'm trying to lengthen in the direction of the right heel. So I turn the head and eyes as I press into the foot, looking towards the right hand and thinking that both arms, both sets of fingertips are lengthening away from each other. Such a nice movement, this. And the next time you have done that, you've pressed into the foot, you've rolled the pelvis to the left, you've looked and you're reaching down towards your right hand, which is reaching towards the right heel. Stay there with the right side of the pelvis lifted and see then can you roll or turn or slide the head and eyes to look towards the left arm and then towards the right arm. And each arm that you're looking to, still breathing, you're thinking of it gaining length, length, as you turn the head and eyes to look. And then please pause, carefully come back to centre, undo, allow the legs to go long, and take a moment just to digest or uh, assimilate the effects of those variations. Interestingly enough, I feel a bit shorter now on my right hand side compared to my left. So let's try and even things out a little bit. Bring your left leg to standing. Find a good stable place for the foot which isn't too close to the right leg and begin to explore, just pressing into the left foot to roll the pelvis to the right, but not just to the right. It, you're trying to make sure that the movement rolls through those one o'clock, two o'clock hours. The reason it's important to think about that, and you might just need to pull the tummy in a little bit to help get this sense that the movement is transferring your weight to the right, is that quite often in class what I see is there's a slight push into the foot and then what people often do is they'll contract the lower back, back muscles to try and push the pelvis over. And if you're doing that, slow things down and really try and get this sense that it's the push of the foot into the earth, as if I'm pushing the whole of the planet earth away from me, to begin to help me roll the pelvis 
to the right so that the lower back on the right hand side is travelling closer to the floor. Now pause, lengthen your right arm overhead, so the right arm overhead, palm towards the ceiling and begin to press into the left foot to roll the pelvis to the right through those two o'clock, one o'clock hours with the idea that that push is going to lengthen the right arm a little bit on the floor. But don't try and make that happen by pulling through the hand and the arm. You're really trying to see can you get the connection of the foot and the push which travels through the ribs towards that right shoulder to just lengthen the right arm a little bit on the floor. Definitely feels different for me on this side. My right shoulder is a little bit tighter. Maybe it's the same for you. And, and then see if you can begin to turn the head and eyes as if you wanted to see that right arm and then you come back to centre. So you push into the foot to roll the pelvis, to lengthen the right arm, and you allow the head and eyes to turn as if you wanted to see that right hand, and then you come back. And again, you might find at first you're just looking at the right armpit, but if you allow, as you press into the foot, the chin, to begin to move away from the breastbone as if it's the chin that's looking at the hand you'll begin to see more of the arm and you'll notice if you can see in the video that, that as I do that movement I'm allowing the back of the head to slide in the direction of my left shoulder and then I come back to centre now pause and this time turn your left palm towards the ceiling that left arm is down by your side and now as you begin to press into the left foot to lengthen the right arm allowing the pelvis to roll look down at your left arm and have the idea that the left arm is reaching, those fingertips are reaching in the direction of your left heel. Reaching down, so you can feel, as you're allowing the head to roll and maybe slide, how these ribs on the left hand side come together to facilitate the sliding of the arm. And if those ribs on the left hand side are coming closer together, these lovely ribs on the right hand side are o opening. Good. Now stay, the next time you're looking down to the left, your left side of the pelvis is lifted, stay there and then roll the head and eyes, turn the head and eyes to look towards your right arm and then towards your left arm. And each time you're doing this, you're having the idea that the arms lengthen away from each other. Now, once you've done a few, leave it alone and come and take a rest. Oh, and notice how that feels. So I'm beginning to feel, feel those right ribs sitting a little bit more towards the floor. And if you roll the head from side to side, just notice how that feels now. Come to centre, bring your right leg back to standing. So we're back with the right leg standing. Finding that good place where you can push easily into the foot, where it feels most stable, keeping the knee looking towards the ceiling. Take your left arm overhead once more, palm towards the ceiling, and have your right arm down by your side with the palm also turned towards the ceiling. Begin again to press into the left foot, 
to roll the pelvis to the left towards ele to 11 and 10 o'clock to lengthen that left arm and then begin to turn the head and eyes once more to the right as you slide the right arm or lengthen the right arm in the direction of the right foot. So you allow the head and eyes to turn as it, you feel how the weight shifts to the left hand side of the ribs and if you can stay with your fingertips if you can reach underneath the right heel or some part of the right foot. Now some of you will be able to reach that position easily, some it will probably induce a bit of cramp so bear with it. Um, others may not get near the heel. Um, some of you may only be able to take hold of your leggings or socks if you have them. Uh, wherever you get to is fine, but stay there. Stay there, if possible, with the fingertips underneath the heel. And then stay there and just see if you can lift and lower the right hip down to the floor, pressing into the foot, which is on the fingertips, to lift the hip. That's it. Pressing and lowering. Pressing and lowering. And you'll feel, hopefully, it's really interesting how this movement asks the lower ribs to do something from the upper ribs. My upper ribs are down to the floor. My right shoulder is heavy, but my lower ribs are turning to the left as my upper ribs stay turned to the right. Now stay with the pelvis lifted, the right side of the pelvis lifted, and just see if you can lift the right toes off the floor, keeping the ball of the foot down, lifting and lowering, still with the hip lifted. And as you're lifting and lowering the toes, can you think of all five toes lifting and spreading uh, and then if you can make that movement a little bit quicker but without hurry still keeping the right hip lifted and then leave the toes down let the pelvis come back down and then lift it and lower it a few times still trying to keep that knee looking towards the ceiling still thinking of that thigh lengthening away from you and then leave it alone and take a rest. Don't be surprised if you do get a bit of cramp if it's an unusual position for you but it does marvellous things in the hip and the, and the back. So notice how everything feels when you come onto the back and then please bring your right leg back to standing. Again, finding that stable place. Take the left arm overhead once more, turn the right palm towards the ceiling, that right arm is down by your side. And once again, see if you can slide the right arm down to the right foot, turning the head and eyes. And some of you will be able to and bring the fingertips underneath the heel again. Some of you will be able to get more of the hand underneath the foot, maybe the palm of the hand. Some of you will be able to reach more in underneath the arch of the foot. Wherever you get to is fine. And this time stay with the right side of the pelvis lifted. L lower it and lift it a few times. And then stay with the right side of the pelvis lifted. And this time, could you lift the whole of the front of the right foot, so the toes, the ball of the foot, keeping the heel down, and then lower the ball of the foot and the toes. See if you can find the differentiation of the ball of the foot from the toes a few times, keeping the jaw nice and relaxed, the breath nice and easy. And then stay with the foot down, and once more, lift and lower the right side of the pelvis. 
does that become a little bit easier now? And then leave it alone, come back to the middle and take a rest. In resting, think, for those of you who have done the breathing lessons, think about the inhalations and your exhalations, so your normal inhalations and exhalations. Thinking of the breath coming into the right hand side of the torso to create length, down to the pelvis and up to the right shoulder and up to the right ear and width and depth with the breath. And then pause and bring your left leg to standing. So find the best place for the left foot that's going to support the push down into the foot. Take your right arm overhead comfortably overhead, palm towards the ceiling. Have your left arm down by your side with the left palm turned towards the ceiling. And begin to push through the foot, the left foot, to try and get that sense of the right arm lengthening on the floor. And you may need just to help with that to pull in the tummy a little bit to make sure the movement is travelling to the right arm and then begin to lengthen the left arm down in the direction of the left heel so you turn the head and eyes to look where the hand is reaching and if you can stay with the left fingertips underneath the left heel you can always move the left foot closer to you to facilitate that position. Again, if you can't bring the fingers underneath, you can take hold of your leggings if you're wearing them or a sock, just or you stay a little bit apart from there, but stay in this side bent and rotated position and see if you can lift and lower the left side of the pelvis a few times. So lifting and lowering still trying to keep the knee looking at the ceiling, still thinking of that thigh lengthening away from you. And then stay with the left hip lifted or the left side of the pelvis. See, can you lift and lower the left toes up and down, thinking of all the toes joining in that movement, not just the big toe trying to feel each toe individually, and then do that more quickly, lifting and lowering the toes. And then leave it alone, lift and lower the left hip a few times, again, noticing how the spiralling of the lower ribs is towards the right, upper ribs towards the left, as you lift and lower the pelvis, creates a really interesting differentiation or movement in the breastbone. One part, the bottom part of the breastbone, it spirals off to the right as the upper part spirals to the left. Amazing the flexibility that can be achieved in the ribs and of course if you have that mobility in the ribs it means you have mobility in the spine. Now, stay with the pelvis lifted once more and see if you can lift the toes, the ball of the foot, put the ball of the foot down and then the toes. So toes, ball of the foot, ball of the foot down and toes. Just doing this a number of times if you can, still keeping the pelvis lifted. And then stay with the foot down and lift and lower the left side of the pelvis a few times. Just exploring this movement, checking all the always that the jaw is relaxed, the breath is nice and easy, the eyes are soft, that you're letting any unnecessary movements 
melt away. Feldenkrais called them parasitic movements, ones that you habitually or compulsively do whenever you do anything. So you're just feeling the pleasure in the variation, but just seeing if you can let go of any unnecessary effort. Good. Leave it alone, come back to centre and take a rest. How are you feeling now on your imaginary balance beam? I don't feel as though I'm going to roll off the left so much now. And then as you come back to the breath, again noticing your normal inhalation as we did in the other breathing lessons, see if you can bring your attention to the breath on the left hand side in particular. And allowing the inhalations to create this sense of length with the breath all the way down to the pelvis, all the way out to the sides, all the way up to the left shoulder and all the way up to the left ear. And with that sense of length, the idea too that the breath is creating depth, so that the ribs that are in contact with the floor, they just press a little bit more subtly with the in-breath into the floor as you focus on the, on the breath. Now, Bring your right leg back to standing, finding that stable place for the foot. Take the left arm once more overhead, palm towards the ceiling, the right arm down by your side. And once more, press into the right foot to try and lengthen that left arm on the floor. So you might need to help that by pulling in the tummy to lengthen that arm. And slide once more the right hand underneath the right foot. So you turn the head and eyes to look towards the right arm and the right foot. And let the pelvis this time, once you've lifted and lowered it a few, a few times, Keep it, let it rest down as much as you comfortably can. Bring your left hand behind the back of the head, so back of the head, not the neck. Lift the elbow, point the elbow a little bit towards the ceiling and see if you can lift the head as if you wanted to look towards your right front pocket. So you're just seeing, can you lift and lower the head a few times to do that. It's always a good idea to use the breath to help you do this. So I think of breathing out as I lift the head and that enables these ribs. So for me, these ribs on the right hand side, I use the out breath to soften and certain of those ribs will more clearly press down into the floor to facilitate the lifting and lowering of the head. Allow the chest to do the work so it's not a strain in the neck muscles. Now pause for a moment and see could you lift and lower the right foot a few times off the floor. So the whole of the foot which stays in the hand so the knee effectively comes closer to the head. And once you've done that a few times, see if you can combine lifting the head and the elbow and the knee towards each other. So you, the knee and the elbow come towards each other. They don't, by any stretch of the imagination, have to touch. It's not about them touching. It's much more about, can you allow the ribs to come down into the floor? Now, once you've done a few, leave it alone come back to the middle and take a rest. Ah, feels nice. Let's do the other side. So bring the left leg to standing. Take the right arm 
overhead, the palm is towards the ceiling. Have the left arm down by your side, palm towards the ceiling, and press into the left foot to roll the pelvis to the right with the idea that right arm is lengthening and turn the head and eyes as you reach down with the left arm to bring it somewhere underneath the left foot and stay there and lift and lower the left side of the pelvis a few times stay then with the pelvis down Bring the right hand behind the head, lift the elbow a little bit towards the ceiling and lift and lower the head a few times with the assistance of the arm. As if you're looking towards your left pocket, using the out breath to help you. Don't strain to do this if you can only lift the head a little bit, that's absolutely fine. But feel how the ribs, the ribs can soften, slide down, so those lower floating ribs come closer towards the floor. Once you've explored it, just lifting the head, see if you can lift and lower the left leg a few times, so it stays in the hand, and then combine the lifting of the head and the knee towards each other, or the elbow and the knee towards each other. Again, as you breathe out, relaxing the jaw, so you feel how if you let the ribs, the ribs move, move, then the head becomes light. Once you've done that a few times, leave it alone, come back to the centre and take a rest. And then bring both legs to standing. Bring both legs to standing. Return to doing the movement we looked at at the big one of the movements we looked at at the beginning of the class of pressing into the right foot to roll the pelvis to the left and you're pressing into the left foot to roll the pelvis to the right. Let's see how that feels now, that sort of walking action. And then pause, turn both palms towards the ceiling and see if you can lengthen your left arm down towards the left heel to bring the fingertips underneath the heel. So notice I've turned, rolled my head and eyes to do that. See if you can keep the left fingertips underneath the left heel and then slide the right fingers underneath the right heel to see if you can do that. And then once more, press into one foot and then the other to roll the pelvis from side to side, keeping the head in the middle. And then leave it alone and take a rest. As you're resting, bring your attention back to your breath. So we're connecting this freedom in the ribs to the breath. So now think of the in-breath as it comes into the nostrils, over the palate, down into the trachea and the bronchioles spreading out into the lungs. See if you can allow that sense of the in-breath creating length and width and depth in both sides of the trunk. really interesting again this lesson rather like the other lesson I taught free the ribs my ribs definitely feel a lot flatter heavier into the floor 
which means my some of my back muscles have let go, and I feel much more evenly poised on my beam now. And if you just roll the head a little bit from one side to the other, see how that feels. And then pause, please bend the knees, roll to the side, and eventually transition to sitting and up to standing. And as ever, I'll end the lesson formally there, but do take a moment when you do when you come to standing just to see how the lesson has affected your um, organisation in standing. I hope very much you enjoyed the lesson. If you have any comments, please leave them in the comment section below. If you haven't already subscribed to my channel, then please hit the subscribe button. See you soon. Bye.